You've asked for it. Generalized hyperbolic stretching within SETI Astro Suite. Welcome to SETI Astro. So be sure to get the newest release. Go to SETIAstro.com under Astro Programs, SETI Astro Suite. We'll have the link to, to get it here to take you to the GitHub repository where you can get the latest version. Uh, currently 2.15.13. So when you open SETI Astro Suite, it's going to be under the Curves Utility. We have Traditional Curves and Generalized Hyperbolic. So let's uh, go through what the Hyperbolic Curve is, how to utilize it. I think a lot of you are already familiar. This was highly requested I get put into SETI Astro Suite. So let's jump right into it. So my implementation has uh, two formulas for it, one for the lower half and one for the upper half of the symmetry point. Um, and then you could actually see what in the equation here uh, those sliders are. So there's going to be an alpha, there's going to be a beta, we're also going to have a gamma curve and a symmetry point. So let's go ahead and see how all these affect the actual curve shape and how to utilize them. Now I have up just a very basic image in here so we can run through what the options are, how to utilize everything. So let's click generalized hyperbolic. That's going to open a page here uh, with a bunch of dots on our histogram curve. And then you're gonna also see the alpha, beta, gamma. There's a low point protection, high point protection. Um, there's a show histogram, reset inflection. There's an overall reset button. And then there's a lot of things we could do within here. So let's just go over what this curve looks like first before we start fiddling with a bunch of stuff. So the alpha in that equation that we showed controls um, like the S, like how S-C it looks, right? So that's gonna be like your contrast. As you get crazier and crazier positive numbers, this S curve gets steeper and steeper. And then on the flip side of it, if you make it extremely shallow, it flips the S the other direction. And a uh, value of one is a straight line. The other item in there was the beta. Now the beta actually is the slope of the curve at the inflection point. So if we're here essentially at a straight line, if we start raising the beta up, you can see that it's adding a slope here to the inflection point, which by default is just 0.5 if you don't actually define one. And this is going to be an additional slope on top of whatever the actual S shape was. So you could do some interesting things, like you have your normal S shape with alpha, but then you can slide the beta term down below one and actually flatten out the um, middle of the curve by putting in a value below one in the beta, right? Because that wants to push the curve the other direction. So you could actually get like a little opposite of an S curve right at the inflection point as well. Um, so those are just some, some things you could actually play around with as you want to really hone in what the curve is going to look like for you know your stretching needs. And then the gamma is essentially a mid-tone slider. Um, it's oriented the, the correct direction. So when you raise gamma, it's gonna brighten the whole image. When you lower it, it's gonna darken it. Uh, and that's just another way you can control the overall shape of the curve itself. And then if you click the reset, it's going to reset all those sliders uh, back to where they need to go. And then the low point protection and high point protection, uh, it's going to minimize the effect of the hyperbolic curve on the portion of the curve either below or above the symmetry point. So let's go ahead and look as we apply more and more protection on the low point protection. You can see that we are negating the curve below the symmetry point. If you raise it all the way up, it'll actually just be a linear line straight to the symmetry point. And then on the high point protection, as you make that more and more protected, it's going to flatten that back down towards the linear curve down to the symmetry point. Uh, to the point where it could be completely straight as well. So just another set of means on protecting what you want in your curve. Like if you want a really aggressive steep portion there, but you don't really want anything affected below your symmetry point there, 
and you do want some amount of curve but maybe not as much you can actually go ahead and get pretty aggressive on some of these items such that you are just as soon as you hit your control point you get a quick contrast boost up and then it's linear from there on out again so let's talk about actually setting the control point now you can do it a couple different ways uh, some people call it the symmetry point it's actually an inflection point um, you could in the grid over here press and hold control and left click and that's going to place the symmetry point there you could see the um, curve control points get all bunched up on the one side and spread out on the other the other thing you could do is somewhere over in the image itself if you have a gradient where you want to highlight that portion of it you can control click anywhere over in the image itself here it's going to put the symmetry point there at that and then there's another way too you can click show histogram and now that's going to show the histogram of your image you could either have it linear like this or you can toggle a, a log view of it uh, but you can control click anywhere on this as well and it's going to adjust your symmetry points in the in the image as well and then from here right you can go ahead and play around with your curves what you want to do right maybe you want to do something like this give a get a little uh, contrast boost up right above the the control point we had on there and then click apply curve and then we got that uh, bump up on these uh, brighter portions in this case for for this particular curve another new thing that I added in curves let's say you do have a, a funky curve to find that you like to utilize uh, you can click save curve now and this is gonna be my I don't know a funky curve and it's gonna save it as its own kind of file and then when you're just uh, in curves you can go ahead and load that curve up and then it's going to put that uh, curve in there for you so uh, curves now has that ability to save and load uh, different curves if you want to save your curves the other thing some individuals like doing is using journalist hyperbolic stretch for their initial linear to nonlinear stretch I actually don't recommend that I recommend recommend using statistical stretch to take you into the first uh, nonlinear realm and then from there performing uh, something like GHS but you can utilize it for this case too I would click show histogram toggle the log on the x-axis go ahead and control click someplace over here where you're going to be wanting to do the stretch uh, and then going ahead and giving it uh, qu quite a bit of bump you're also going to want to raise the gamma quite a bit and in this case it looks blocky because for real-time preview it's only an 8-bit preview but as soon as you click apply curve now it does the full resolution curve that you uh, were wanting to do and then from here now is the the time you would start actually utilizing your uh, normal GHS kind of procedure where you're clicking various items that you want to um, see expand it uh, that is quite aggressive and then we want to protect those shadows a little bit maybe we want to change the steepness there hit apply curves and you will just continue working uh, your image like that in in the original fashion that a lot of people have used with uh, GHS but just know that there's a lot of different uh, things in here especially with utilizing beta in such a, a unique way where you can give it your normal S curve but then have the middle portion actually flatten out before going back up it can allow you to do some very unique things within GHS here to really uh, pinpoint those items that you want to stretch within your image while not stretching other areas nearly as much uh, obviously this is a little exaggerated here but just to show you the uh, the style of curves that you could actually get within here uh, and then you know right we can we could flatten out that that dark portion and now we just have 
a contrast applied above the symmetry point uh, because we protected the low lights completely. So there's just a lot of things you can do in my implementation of GHS uh, that I hope a lot of people are going to get some good use out of. Again, control click in the grid to set your control points. Control click in the image to set them here. And then when you have your histogram open, control click in the histogram as well to set your control points via the histogram view. And everybody should also remember now that you could save and load curves, right? You get your, um, your cool curve in that you want to save for future use as well. Be sure to save and load those curves. Well, I hope this is very helpful for a lot of people out there that was hoping to get generalized hyperbolic stretch within SETI Astro Suite. Please comment, like, and subscribe.